Hello, George Romanic here again. We are continuing with exploring beauties of Coriolis force, and now we have problem number three that you hopefully can see on your screens. Of course, it is always useful to first schematize problems like this. If over here we have Montreal and over here is Ottawa, then the distance between these two cities is given, and that is 150 kilometers. Parcel of air is moving from Montreal to Ottawa, like so. And as it is moving, Coriolis force will act because this is northern hemisphere. We already know from previous videos, deflection will be towards the right. So it will be something like this. So this parcel of air, instead of ending up in Ottawa, will end up somewhere here. And that somewhere here, we will call small d. And that's what we are trying to calculate here. Now it is very important to realize something here. If we are taking a right-handed coordinate system, then this is positive u and this is positive y, as it is written here from some of my previous videos. So positive u is eastward, but this parcel of air is moving westward, which means that this velocity is negative. So u is actually negative. 50 meters per second. Or if you want to put it in this format, then V, which is UI, would be negative 50 times I, where I is unit vector in the positive U direction, namely positive X direction, or uh, eastward. And this is negative sign because parcel of air is traveling in the opposite direction of positive U. Both cities are at the same latitude 45.5 degrees north. Okay, now to find deflection thanks to Coriolis force, we use this equation because deflection will be towards the north, as you see over there, and the initial motion is in the u direction, namely negative u. So our equation says dv dt is equal negative fu. Or I can write that dv is negative fu dt. This is differential equation that separates variables. And when you integrate this from 0 to t and from 0 to v, you get v is equal negative fu times t. But I don't need v, I need d. Well, v is dy dt equals negative fut. Or again, this is differential equation that separates variables. So I will get that dy is equal negative fut dt. Now we integrate this again. And uh, the problem doesn't say anything, so we assume that, well, f is constant and u, we assume, is constant. So I'm integrating from time t equals 0, and that's the time when the air parcel is in Montreal and deflection in the meridional direction is 0. And at some time t, and that's the time when air parcel is here, uh, at the latitude of Ottawa, we have, uh, sorry, longitude of Ottawa, we have deflection D, namely deflection that we are interested in. And that means that D is equal, if you solve this integral, you get negative F U T squared over 2. Now this is very nice 
solution, but I do not know this T. However, I do know the distance and I do know velocity of this air parcel, and therefore T, namely time that it takes for this air parcel to reach its destination on the longitude of Ottawa, is uh, this capital distance D over U. Okay? So now we plug in that, that T, we plug in here, and we get that D is equal negative F times U times T squared. That will be D squared over U squared and times this 2 in the denominator. Now I cancel this u and this squared, and I get that d is minus f d squared capital over 2u. And this is the solution for our problem because we know latitude. If we know latitude, we know how to calculate f problem number one in this mini-series, we are given D and we are given U. One caution here, and now I'll emphasize what I mean by that, when you are plugging in U. So uh, let's, uh, let's plug in numbers. So this will be negative F is 2 omega sine phi, as you can see over there. So that will be 2 times, now this is not X, this is times, Omega is 7.27 times 10 to power negative 5. Well, let's not put units. Everything will be in uh, SI units, so I don't put units to make equation too busy. Times sine of phi, and phi is 45.5 degrees times d squared. d squared, that is 150 kilometers, and that means 150 times 10 to power 3 meters, because I want to have everything in nice units. This squared divided by 2 times, now, this is caution. You have to put negative u here, because u is negative 50 meters per second. So times negative 50, and now when you look at it, it makes sense, because this negative sign will cancel with this negative sign, and this whole result will be positive, and positive is what we are after, because deflection is towards the north, and north is positive in our right-handed uh, coordinate system. If we, by mistake, put here just 50, we would get negative number, and the intensity would be the same, but the sign would be flipped, we would end up with wrong result. If you calculate these numbers, you get it's approximately 23 kilometers. You should always double check my calculations, so I do it just once, and there is a chance I m make mistake. But this is not so important, this is the important result. Now, a few things to discuss that I think are very important. If we go to this equation over here, you will see that deflection d, small d, depends on velocity, but also depends on the square of the time. So that means if the parcel of air is moving very fast, it will traverse this distance in very short period of time, and deflection will be smaller because you are more interested in time it takes for the air parcel to pass this distance than velocity because d is proportional to u, but d is proportional to t squared. So slower velocities result in more time that is needed to traverse the same distance, and Coriolis deflection is larger. This is a very important result because you don't see that result directly from these equations over here. You see it when you actually calculate deflection. Another uh, 
thing to discuss here is this actually approximation. Because here I say that time t is time when the air parcel is above this long longitude of Ottawa. But now when the Coriolis force starts deflecting this parcel of air, instead of traveling this straight distance d, it is traveling this curved line. And this line is clearly somewhat longer than the straight line. And that's not something that we account in this equation. In this equation, we take t to be the same from here to here and from here to here, but it's not actually the same. So that's a level of approximation that you need to be aware of. Other than that, it's a beautiful result, very simple calculation. And you can see how you can now plug different numbers. A flying cat is traveling from Belgrade to Rome. Calculate Coriolis deflection. You can do it because, as Richard Feynman said, same equations give same solutions. So you just plug in different numbers, and you'll get different values. But the concept is the same. Until next video. Goodbye.